Let me see. And then I'm going to do the going to do the uh, social media thing. All right. If you are watching on IRC, can you see me? Oh. What am I doing? I'm an idiot. Bear with me, folks. I need to update the website. Do do do. John O can't use this website. Sorry, and if you're watching the recorded video, this is extremely uninteresting right now. But uh, come on, WordPress, you can do it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let me just do this. I'm just updating the website so people can actually tune in. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have viewers. So can people see me on the IRC? Say yes if you can, that will help. Otherwise, I'm just talking to the wind. Yay! Flying Pig can see me. All right, now I'm going to just post a social media network so we can actually get some viewers. And then we'll all be set, my friends. Tweet and... Bear with me, bear with me. I'm just going to post about this. I know this is extremely, extremely uninteresting right now, but we will be getting going in just a minute. Just hang, hang fire. Get your questions in while we're working. Um, I'm just posting to our various social media networks. And then we can get cracking. I did have this all lined up, and then I accidentally closed the tabs because uh, I'm an Indian. This the basic summary here. All right, we have viewers. <laughs> okay. Welsh Buntu is here for the first time. Woo! Okay, so uh, welcome, everyone. My name is John Baker, and I work as the Ubuntu Community Manager. And um, welcome to my weekly video Q&A session. Uh, the basic goal here is to provide an opportunity in which anyone in the community can come and ask any question that you want. So if you want to ask a question about Ubuntu or the community or Canonical, or if you want to ask something about community management or music or free software or politics, it really doesn't matter. Anything you want. Every question is welcome. Anything. You can be as pointed and as specific as you want, and I'm going to try and answer it. Okay. Um, so, uh, so basically the way this works is you'll type your questions into the chat channel, which is below the video stream. If you're watching this back on the recording, then obviously there is no chat channel right now. Uh, but you can ask your questions. Uh, you can also go on to uh, onto, uh, IRC and go to hash ubuntu-on-air, and you can ask your questions there as well. The only kinds of questions I'd appreciate you don't ask are technical support queries. If, if you've got a, an issue with your wireless card or your graphics card or you can't get something working, then I recommend you go and uh, you go and ask on Ask Ubuntu or the Ubuntu forums or somewhere to ask your question there. So um, we can't do this without any questions. So how do I ask my question? Type in the word question in capital letters and then your question. And then tap, tap it into, uh, into, into IRC and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. Flying Pick asks the first question, how many viewers do you currently have? Right now, we have 33 viewers, 34 viewers, 35 viewers, and climbing. So that's what we like. Usually, I tend to find out there's fewer viewers at the beginning, and then you know all the social media stuff tends to propagate, and then we have more and more people, uh, more and more people joining. So 
Um, yeah, get your questions in. Um, so again, type in, your, in the word question in capital letters and then your question and then I will go through them one by one. Now every so often I accidentally skip over one because there's often a lot of chit chat going on, a lot of jibber jabber. And uh, if I skip over one, some people immediately assume that there's a giant cons canonical conspiracy afoot. Uh, but I assure you, um, I'm a bit of an idiot. So sometimes I miss them. So if I skip over one, then uh, if I skip over one, then feel free to give me the equivalent of a, and I will get back to it and I'll try and answer it. So that's basically how it actually really hurt. <laughs> don't know my own strength, which, uh, which I don't tend to have much strength. I'm not a strong man. All right, so let's get, on, let's get to the questions then. So Groovy Grip asked the first one, is there Ubuntu Touch related trivia that you can share? Something inside from inside of Ubuntu, or just something that blew your mind in the community. So there's a couple of things that spring to mind here. So uh, one of the things, so a few bits of trivia. One is that um, one of the things I've asked the engineering manager for Ubuntu Touch, who's a guy called Pat McGowan, to to work on, is to provide a weekly update of things that are going on. So like a lot of you are going to be, you know, you've got one of these or Hang on. One of these running Ubuntu on the phone or the tablet. And, you know, you're probably, day we have daily images, so you can download a daily update and um, you might not be noticing a lot of change there. Sometimes it's difficult to know what's changed. A lot of the changes that are going on with Ubuntu Touch right now are at the lower level foundational pieces, not necessarily the GUI elements. So I've asked Pat to have someone on his team provide a weekly summary of all the changes that are happening. Um, but in addition to that, uh, Pat is um, working to get a daily change log as well. So people who are closer to the to the project can can, uh, can can see what's going on as well. So that's one thing that I think you can expect that's coming soon that's going to be interesting. The other piece of trivia is a real strong focus right now is encouraging our community to write applications for Ubuntu Touch. Um, Michael Hall published a, um, a blog post. Uh, we... we We've been running this this uh, this project to basically work with our community to encourage people to write a set of core applications. So you know, Canonical has been working on getting Ubuntu Touch in place, but then we need the set of core applications uh, available, things like a calendar and a calculator and an email client, things like that. So we wanted to work with our community to make them happen. So what we've done is we've we've been working on this core apps project where we're we're basically helping out with some of the coordination, but our community actually writing the code um, for these apps. So it's been a really cool project that's been going on. I asked Michael to write a blog entry that's just updating people on what's going on there. Uh, so if you go to, I think his blog is mhall119.com. If someone can paste the link into the IRC channel, that would be useful to his blog entry. So that gave, gave an update. Uh, we're going to be having weekly updates about what's happening with, with core apps. The other thing as well is that on Thursday and Friday this week, we're having um, an Ubuntu SDK tutorial days and that's basically where we're going to be having a ton of different sessions teaching people how to write apps using the Ubuntu SDK. I don't know if anyone's tried the Ubuntu SDK yet who's watching here but it's a super cool piece of technology. It's you know it's got an integrated IDE which is Qt Creator. You can write applications. It's got all the documentation integrated. The apps look beautiful. Um, you can you can you know have an application that's running on your desktop and then you can deploy it to your phone or the tablet and you can see it running on the device. It's really neat. So, but you know, we want people to 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 help help uh, to to learn how to use the SDK. So that's what we're doing on Thursday and Friday. A bunch of our members of our community are going to be participating in that as well. And then uh, we're also going to be updating developer.ubuntu.com to focus on more content for the SDK. Uh, I'm just thinking if there's anything else. Um, that's about it. There's also a Google Plus community uh, for the Ubuntu app developers. I'd encourage you. To go and uh, to go and join it, it's it's pretty cool. There's some really good work going on there. Next question is from Seb Seb Seb. Good to see you again. What was the Ubuntu UK podcast interview you just did? What was it about? So uh, so first of all, my apologies to everyone who normally ch tunes into this Q and A. It was an hour later, and the reason for that is because um, I was invited onto the Ubuntu UK podcast to do an interview at seven thirty UTC. So I had to push this by, back by uh, an hour so I could do that and then kick on to this immediately. Um, they basically just asked me some questions about some of the recent controversy in the community around Mir and 
uh, some of Canonical's decision making and my thoughts on that and what we're doing to resolve those issues. So that was basically what it was about. Uh, it was it, the Ubuntu UK podcast is brilliant. It's a really good podcast. I encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, next question is from Welsh Ubuntu. With the new plans for Ubuntu to use the mere display manager, will we still be able to add other desktop environments to the stock Unity environment? So that's a kind of, I assume you mean the stock Ubuntu environment instead of the stock Unity environment, because Unity is a display. It, Unity is a desktop environment that runs on, on a display server, but we don't run other desktops in, inside of Unity. They, so you know you don't run GNOME or KD inside of Unity. Uh, we use the GNOME libraries and the KD libraries inside of Unity, but not the GNOME, the desktop itself. So um, um, so, but in terms of will other desktops be able to run on Mir, which is what I assume your question is? Uh, yes, they can. I mean, so th there's two things here. So. Mirror is a new display server, so you need to write a new backend for a, for a desktop to, to be able to run on it. Because right now, GNOME, KDE, and Unity, they run on X. Uh, so we're going to move Unity to, to run on Mirror. Uh, if GNOME and Kwing want to want to run on Mirror, they can do. They're welcome to do that. Um, it's just up to those projects whether they choose to do that. Um, Mirror is completely open source, completely free software. It's a community that anyone can participate in. I think there's a... it's. It's got a pretty good technical foundation. It's going to be thin. It's going to be detailed. It's going to be focused. So I think it would be good for those desktop CDs. There's nothing stopping anyone using it. Flavor, was KDE's Plasma considered for Ubuntu Touch? Not really. Um, you know, we think the work that's going on in the KDE community is great. But um, you know, the way in which we want to solve the kind of problems we want to solve with phones and tablets isn't you know the way KDE are doing it is a little different to the way we're doing it with Ubuntu Touch, so we decided to, to to focus on our own. And you can see that if you compare Plasma and, and Ubuntu Touch, they're really quite different. They're, they're the same concepts, the same basic concepts, but they're quite different in how they're in, in how they operate. Solid Steel One Four Four will Ubuntu move away from GNOME-based apps and consist so uh, of entirely cute apps when Unity next arrives. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if you look at Ubuntu right now on the desktop, we depend on a lot of GNOME apps. We depend on Nautilus and um, uh, OpenOffice, which backends out to GTK, and things like uh, all the system settings panels, uh, Rhythmbox, Gedit, all of those pieces. We're not going to rewrite all of those pieces in QML. Uh, that would just be an enormous amount of engineering. So, so no, I th but I think what we, get, we are going to be doing is we're going to be encouraging people to write application software using the Ubuntu SDK because it's a, it's a really nice development experience. So it's a really nice uh, platform that people can use to write apps. So we will be focusing on that. So you're going to see less from us, I think, about encouraging people to write applications using Quickly and PyGTK. And we'll encourage people more to write apps using QML uh, as part of, of the Ubuntu SDK. But we're not going to stop people writing applications in, for example, Python and GTK and having them run on the desktop. So you know, we're going to be supporting Python and, and, and GTK for a while, I think. So, um, so uh, dude is correct to me. Get it. Apparently, it's pronounced get it. You know what? It's G edit. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that some other people may call it get it, but I can't bring myself to say that. It makes me sick. Um, so, yeah. So, I think you'll be able to, you, you, for a long time, you're going to be able to see existing applications running on the desktop, but we'll be recommending people to use the Ubuntu SDK. Uh, D. Scheimer, did you hear the System76 interview uh, on the Linux Saxon show? Quite optimistic. Actually, the whole show is pretty open-minded. Uh, no, I haven't heard it. Um, in fact, I saw it in my feed list, and I just haven't... I just have not had a chance. This last two or three weeks has been pretty busy, so I haven't had a chance. Uh, caffeinated, caffeinated Deviant. It's a very serious nickname. Uh, when do you expect major carriers to offer the Ubuntu phone? It really depends on the business relationships that, that are going on right now. I mean, obviously, I, I can't divulge. I can't divulge the business relationships for two reasons. First of all, uh, it would be unprofessional of me to do so. I mean, you know, if a business is talking to another business, you have to keep things confidential between those two businesses. And secondly, I just don't know the details. Uh, I'm not on the business team at Canonical. I don't make those decisions. So um, I don't know. 
I, I'm expecting that we're going to see something towards the end of this year in first quarter of 2014. Uh, guest 23182, uh, will Mat Matthew James make more new icons for Ubuntu 1304? Uh, I assume so, yeah. Um, Seb, 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 what are your comments about Mir and Wayland? Um, only been following some of that news, but seems things got quite heated. Things uh, did get heated, and um, so let me let me recap for those people who have not been following along with their popcorn. So, quite some time ago, Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of Ubuntu, um, said that we were thinking about moving to Wayland in the future for Ubuntu. This was, I think, over two years ago, um, and back then, to just provide the context, Ubuntu was very much focused on the desktop. Um, we weren't really thinking about the the phone and the and the tablet and and all the rest of it, and even if we were, I, it was more of a conceptual idea. Um, spin forward and Canonical did a set set of assessments of whether we should stick with X or whether we should move to Wayland or whether we should build our own thing. So we made some decisions about that. Uh, there was a set of technical decision making that was made about Wayland, and I'm not the best person to recap that because I didn't make the decision. I was not. I'm not on the team. Um, you're best off checking the the spec, and and also uh, Chris Hulse Rogers on Google Plus uh, presented some technical um, explanation about that as well. Um, but some technical decisions were made that essentially found that Wayland wasn't really going to be a neat solution for what we want to do with Ubuntu. And the goal here with Ubuntu is we want everything that we use in the system to be really thin and lightweight. Um, a good example of this is GDM. So GDM is the, is the login manager for, um, for GNOME. And one of the things that we found is that GDM provides a ton of functionality that we don't need in Ubuntu. Um, so we decided to build LightDM, and Robert Ansel built this, and it's a very, very tight code base. It's really well tested. Uh, and LightDM, the login manager for Ubuntu, anyone who's used Ubuntu will see that it's, it's pretty neat, it looks good, and it works you know, it works effectively. And um, it meant that it was a better decision for us to just maintain this thinner piece of well-tested code than a big upstream component, um, which has got a ton of functionality that could potentially introduce bugs that we need to support and we need to take care of. So that was the theory. And I think the same philosophy has been applied to, to Unity. Like, if you look at Unity, it's a very, very thin... Uh, very, very thin desktop environment that tries to keep out of your way. It's not cluttered with a ton of configura configuration options. I think the same philosophy was applied to Mir. So I think, you know, when the technical team looked at, uh, at X, X does a ton of stuff that, you know, we don't want to maintain. A ton of functionality that we can't presume in the Linux kernel because it supports things like BSD. Uh, and Wayland, from their assessment, also has a lot of functionality that we don't need. Um, so this was less about, you know, some of the criticism we received was, why don't you add this functionality that you need to Wayland? But all the things that we would have needed to add would have really contorted Wayland into something quite different, which would have meant that Wayland would have potentially, A, might not have taken our patches, and B, may have ended up just shipping our requirements as well as other requirements. So it's the very, very general purpose display server. And for us, it's more about, not about adding stuff, it's about removing stuff. It's about keeping it very, very focused and tight. So the decision ultimately was made to to switch to Mir, was to, to create our own with Mir. Uh, now, some people think that that's a, a terrible decision. Um, my feeling here is that I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing this. Uh, at the end of the day, there is kind of like an informal social presumption that, that Wayland is a replacement for X. Nothing's shipping it. Like, nothing is shipping Wayland. Actually, I tell a lie. There's like a Rebecca Black themed distro <laughs> that I think ships it, um, believe it or not. But it's, you know, Wayland's hit 1.0, but from what I can tell, nothing's really shipping it. Um, and my view here has always been, you know, when you create free software, you have every right to create it in whatever opinionated fashion you want. If I'm going to take time away from my schedule as an individual to write a piece of free software that I'm going to share with other people, then I can create, make, I can make a set of unilateral decisions if I want to. The difference is, is that when you, begin, when you make that a community project and other people start participating, in my mind, the social engagement changes, and then you can't make unilateral decisions because other people are taking their time and effort to invest in that as well. So Mir is an open source project now. 
and everybody who works in it should expect to work in a collaborative way with Canonical, and Canonical should work collaboratively with the community. Um, so I think that's good. Um, to me, at the end of the day, good code wins. Uh, if Mir is terrible and buggy and it doesn't work, then you know it's not going to be good, and people are going to use Wayland. If people uh, if if people find that Mir is 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 efficient and highly performant and works well, I think other desktops will be interested in using it as well. Um, so to me, that's that's the basic that's the basic philosophy that I have. At the end of the day, my theory is let's stop arguing and let's just get on and make software. I'd rather instead of all the Wayland people arguing with the Mir people and everybody who's trapped in between, I'd rather everyone just works on creating great software and then the best software wins out. Um, you know, we've seen this with KD and GNOME and Unity and XFCE. It's great to have multiple desktops because it allows an opportunity for people to compete and to create a sense of friendly competition between those uh, between those different environments. Sorry, that was a really long-winded question, but uh, long-winded answer. But <coughs> I hope that it um, gave you an idea of what I'm thinking. Um, Mike Dev uh, asked, "Will Mir improve gaming performance with Ubuntu?" I expect that it will. Yes. I mean. It's a little too early to tell, but one of the core goals with Mir is that it should be highly performant. Uh, because, you know, bear in mind that Mir is not just designed to run the desktop. The idea with Mir is that it will run on the desktop, the phone, and the tablet. On both smartphones, which are kind of replacements, like the same kind of phone mm -hmm. hardware um, um, profile as, uh, as a typical Android phone, as well as super phones, things where you can have, you know, the phone that docks and then it boots a full Ubuntu, Ubuntu desktop. The idea is that Mir should work across all of these different hardware platforms, um, as well as um, uh, you know, as well as being an open project that anyone can use. And Unity also should be a, the goal is to make Unity a single code base as well that runs across all of those platforms. So if we fix a bug in Unity on the desktop, it benefits all of the other hardware devices as well. So I, I personally think this is the right step forward for Ubuntu in helping us to improve the, vo the velocity of the project, but also for us to, to work as openly as possible. Um, next question. Uh, where is it? Oh, I skipped over one. Here was an example of me skipping over one. Steam for Linux asked, since Ubuntu is switching to Mir and Qt, will all the progress Unity has made mean nothing? No, no, not at all. I mean, there's two types of progress. There's technical developments, which I think is what you're referring to. And there's progress with, um, you know, mindshare. I think there's a lot of mindshare with Ubuntu and a lot of mindshare with Unity. I went to the Southern California Linux Expo uh, a couple of weeks ago with some other Canonical members, and um, most of the people I saw there were running Unity. So I think there's a lot of people who enjoy using Unity. I think there's a lot of people who used it at first who thought it sucked, and now they've tried it and they're like, actually, this is pretty good. Um, um, so. You know, I think the mindshare is good. In terms of the technical switch, there's going to be some code, like there's, there's some, you know, Unity right now uses something called Nux, and that's going to be moved over to Qt and QML. Um, but it's not a tremendous amount of work to do that. It's work that needs to be done. But once we've done that, we won't have to do this again, which is good. Because um, we'll already have that conversion code base. Um, next question is from Fripp. What happened in the community this last week? Why so many strong feelings and anger? So I think to summarize it, there was, there was a series of announcements um, that we made um, that angered some people for various reasons. One was um, Rick Spencer, who's the VP of Ubuntu Engineering, put together a proposal for a rolling release. Um, now, some people interpreted that, that, that proposal as really a decision's being made and it's been thinly veiled as a discussion when it's actually already been made. Well, I can tell you, I work directly for Rick. Rick and I have been friends for quite some time, and I'm privy to all of these discussions at Canonical in terms of Ubuntu engineering uh, direction and where we're moving. I can guarantee the decision has not been made. It really is a community de decision to make. Rick doesn't have the authority to make that decision. The technical board have the authority to make that decision. That's how our governance works. So I think some people got the wrong end of the stick about that. Um, that was so there was already some grumbling going on about that, and then we proposed um, the idea of um, um, well, actually the, this came first. We proposed the idea of moving the Ubuntu Developer Summit to an online capacity. So right now we have a physical event that happens every six months, and the idea was 
let's take these to be online. And, and you know, the rationale there is that we want it to be more open and transparent to people. I think some people thought, oh, my God, this is canonical just trying to cut money, just trying to cut costs. Um, now, I'm not going to deny it. But the UDS costs an absolute arm and a leg to put on. It's an expensive event to put on. But, you know, we used to run UDS years ago for a fraction of the, of the cost. Slimming down the cost of UDS is a no-brainer. We can do that quite easily. Or a big chunk of this really is about making sure that people who traditionally can't travel to UDS, who can't justify the time off work or can't afford the travel or, or who can't get sponsorship, can participate. And the idea was to do this more often as well. Now, the, doing UDS more often is a subtle but important detail here. One of the problems we have with Ubuntu right now, one of the criticisms that we've received is that we plan every six months at UDS. But this is software, so the software world changes quite a lot. And then what happens is we make a set of decisions to change in between those two endpoints, and we get criticism that it wasn't discussed at UDS, whereas in reality we have to make that decision uh, after we'd had a UDS and before the next one. So the idea is to make those UDSs more often, once every three months, and then that shortens the time frame when we can just make sure that we bring everything out into the community and we have a full discussion about it. So some people didn't like the idea of moving to UDS. And you know, just to clarify again, we're going to do two of these. We've already done one. We're going to do another one in a couple of months. And we're just going to see how well they work. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, if, if the virtual UDS doesn't serve the needs of the, of the community and of, of Canonical, then we won't do it. We'll do, an, we'll do a face-to-face a -face one. I personally think we're going to need both. I think we're going to need some kind of face-to-face -face time uh, in some format because um, I think it's valuable for, for seeding social relationships and bonding between people. But I think that we're going to really be able to refine the virtual format. In fact, I had a meeting with a bunch of people today, and there's a ton of things we want to change already with the virtual UDS, things like how the session page is, 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 you know, is displayed, uh, having a wrap-up session at the end that summarizes all the tracks, um, you know, just some small adjustments that we can make just to refine that event and keep on refining it at, at the end of every UDS. Um, so, you know, and then of course there was the mere thing that happened, and I've already discussed that already, but there was some controversy around whether that was felt like that was a good decision or whether kind of had the right to make that decision. Uh, and there was a lot of anger and noise and shouting about it, uh, but we get this in open source. And this is one of the things I find a bit frustrating about open source from time to time is, I wish that more people would think to themselves, you know what? So somebody's doing something that I personally disagree with, that's fine. It doesn't mean that I need to go and get angry and aggressive and personal and shouty at them. And some people seem to forget their manners when it comes down to having a discussion about something that people disagree with. Any, you know, disagree with. And I just, I, I wish that people would show some more respect. Um, the one thing that's consistent with my team is we don't pay attention to people who are shouty and trolling. We pay attention to people who are critical, but they're fair and constructive in their criticism. So, um, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, next question is from, uh, where is it? Uh, Justin86. Hello, there was a little noise around me to space over the internet, especially among Wayland developers. Uh, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I've already answered that, Justin86, a few minutes ago. Ward asks, how's the barbecuing going? Oh, I love barbecuing. Barbecuing is going well. Um, been running this little website on the side just as a bit of a, a hobby, barbecuepad.com, and uh, we did our first cook-off uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was fun, so people can go and cook together and, and yeah, just having a lot of fun. I'm actually going to be doing my first barbecue competition in June, which I'm really excited about. So pretty stoked, pun intended. Um, Flavor asks, how many people are working on Mir full-time? You know, that's a really good question. I don't know. I honestly don't know how big the team is. Um, uh, I think that it's, I think it's less than 20. Um, it's probably like 5, 10, 15 people. I don't know how many. Darewop. So while quickly can still be used for app development, is the SDK route better for creating new desktop apps? I would recommend it, yes. Uh, Mike Dev, have you started hacking on QML using the Ubuntu SDK? And if so, will the Ubuntu Accomplishments program be ported to QQML? I've done a little bit of hacking on that. Uh, I, I haven't had much of a chance, unfortunately, I've been so busy recently to, to play around with it with the SDK. It is a really nice platform for writing code, though, and you know we definitely like to move Ubuntu Accomplishments over to QML as well, definitely. Shower97, I like Unity, but in, in Ubuntu 12.10, it's so slow. Why is it so slow? Um, 
we've found that generally it's been a higher performance. What you might be finding is a little slower. Sometimes some of the network lookups, uh, which has been improved. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to see a much faster Unity in 13.04. I mean, I've already noticed there was this one commit that landed in 13.04 that was like a tremendous speed improvement. Uh, everyone was talking about it that day, so I think you'll see some improvements. Well, Ubuntu, will the main display manage to be compatible with the likes of VirtualBox and VMware Player, both as a host OS and a guest OS? These virtualization programs are critical for many people. What about virtualization, uh, other virtualization systems such as KVM, Zen, etc.? I'm thinking of things along the lines of accelerated 2D and 3D guest OS graphics drivers, which are currently targeted at X11. Will Canonical be working with Oracle and the VirtualBox community to ensure that Mir will be supported by the VirtualBox guest editions. It's also a good way to test new software, e.g. development version of Ubuntu. And how will the use of Mir impact other existing proprietary programs and apps? So I'm going to answer those in reverse order. So in terms of people using existing proprietary applications, existing apps, things like Steam, you'll be able to run X applications that run on, um, on, on Mir. So all existing software that you use in Ubuntu will run on Mir, um, even if it's not been ported over to explicitly run a mirror. It'll, be, it'll essentially support rootless X apps. In terms of whether it works in VirtualBox and VMware Player, I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, so I'm sorry. Yeah, best off asking the mirror team. If you go into hash Ubuntu dash mirror on Freenode, you can, you can find people in there who can answer your questions about that or anything else. Uh, C Wicket, Quicket. When Ubuntu switches to Mir, what about other desktops about Unity? Kelly already announced uh, blah, 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 blah. I've already answered that question quick. Uh, I'm assuming that's Christopher Wicket. Yeah, I already answered that um, about 10 minutes ago. Uh, Anvil 201, can we expect a new Ubuntu app showdown geared towards Ubuntu Touch later this year? You can expect a new app showdown geared towards Ubuntu Touch in the next couple of months. We're actually working on one right now. Dude, would you like a question that isn't Mir based? Yes. I don't mind answering any questions, honestly, folks. You know, um, ask anything you like. Um, seriously, if you want to ask, spend the entire hour. I know Mir is on the minds of many people, and I'm going to do my best to answer the questions. Unfortunately, I don't have some of the technical answers. So, like I said, I'd recommend you go to hash Ubuntu dash Mir. Um, but feel free to ask anything you want. Um, but nice question, <laughs> Joey. Seb, 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 why is Unity going to use QML exactly? Read some articles about that, but they weren't really clear as to the reasons why exactly. Also, I remember how Unity 2D was using Qt because GTK apparently could not do something Qt could, but then Unity 2D got dropped completely. So let me give you a bit of background about this. So um, the reason why we're moving to... We, we, we've had a bit of a challenge um, in choosing our desktop, like our recommended platform. Because we don't want to build our own widget set and toolkit and all that kind of stuff. It's too much work. Um, um, but one of the challenges that we've had is we want something that, so that people can write, you know, hardcore, low-level, comprehensive applications like Office Suites in, but also that people can write uh, games and other more simple applications in without having to write in a lower-level language. Now, GTK traditionally has served those purposes, you know, pretty well. But one of the challenges with GTK, and you know, I just want to express that this is from a position of love. I've written a bunch of GTK software in the past, and I, I love it. But GTK has kind of fallen behind the times in recent years. Uh, much as the, the GTK team has been doing a tremendous job, uh, the experience of writing applications in GTK is not as integrated as it is with with Qt with Qt Creator. Uh, you know, with GTK, you've got something like um, you've got you know Glade as an example. Um, and Glade is good to a degree. It, it's easy and it's good for building your UIs and then hooking them into your code. But the integration between the UI and being able to switch out different UIs with Qt Creator and how that works inside of an IDE and how you attach code to different pieces in the documentation or whatever else is much better with Qt and QML. The, there is a, the, the other thing we found with, particularly since the move to GeoObject introspection with, with GTK, is that the documentation for uh, things like Python is basically non-existent. There's not a lot of it. Um, when I was writing Ubuntu Accomplishments, I had to sometimes find myself like like looking through the code, the GTK code, to find what I was looking for, or introspecting different uh, objects to see if I could find out what I needed to do. And you know, most casual developers are not just not going to do that. So 
we found that QML is good for writing those games because it's a really simple, um, really simple declarative language for writing things like games or simple applications. And it's actually pretty powerful. But if you want to write something much lower level, then you can write in C++ with Q, and Q is a pretty managed widget in that, in, in that, in that sense. The other thing that's nice about Q and QML is that there's a big ecosystem around it. There's, there's companies like, like, like um, um, ICS and um, Digia and various other people who, uh, who are creating, um, who are creating, uh, who are creating, uh, you know, they, they do Q and QML training and they do custom consultancy work and all that kind of stuff. And that's good for us in terms of hiring people and encouraging other people to capitalize around the platform as well. So that was basically the thinking that went into it. Um, OK. Seb, 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 in your personal opinion, do you think Mir uh, may get adopted by lots of non-Ubuntu-based distros in the future as well? Or will it be likely Unity uh, where other distros generally don't want to support it because of certain technical reasons? So um, I think that right now there's a lot of I think there's some technical viewpoints on Mir, and I think there's a lot of emotional viewpoints on Mir. I think there's some people in some other desktops don't want to support Mir because uh, they have a ideological opposition to it. At the end of the day, my theory is this: great software wins out. If Mir is great and it offers a great desktop server for 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 for, for users, and um, you know. Ubuntu continues to work with our flavors and uh, and make it easy to build a desktop using uh, to make to build a distribution that you know build you know using Launchpad and all the packaging and, and all the rest of it that we provide. Then um, there is absolutely no reason in my mind why Mir shouldn't be attractive by the desktops. Um, likewise, the same can be said for for Wayland. I mean, Wayland, uh, you know, massive respect and kudos to to the Wayland team. A bunch of people who work at Wayland are, are buddies of mine. Um, but at the end of the day, it really only matters if Wayland serves the purpose that it serves well. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we can talk as we can talk until the cows come home about Mir versus Wayland. But at the end of the day, it's about what works well. And um, you know, if Wayland works well, then more desktops will go with it. If Mir works well, then I think more desktops will go with that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, Next question, where are we? Elbuntu, I'm developing apps for Ubuntu Touch. Uh, must the project be hosted on Launchpad or can you use your own service? You can host them anywhere you want. I mean, one of the nice things about using Launchpad is that we're going to be building integration into the, into the, um, into the Ubuntu SDK for things like uploading your branches to Launchpad and things like that. But uh, if you want to host them on GitHub or anywhere else, yeah, go ahead. Um, Next question is from Justin86. Do you prefer manual or automatic gearbox in ordinary everyday cars and why? <laughs> I personally love automatics. I know a lot of like car snobs are like, oh, I must drive a manual. I, I put it this way. I don't like driving. I've never liked driving. I, I respect people who love driving, the thrill of the road, you know, the, the wind going through their hair. Well, obviously that ship sailed a while back, um, you know. I'm just not into driving. And ever since I've worked from home, I've become increasingly impatient having to drive as well. Like a 30-minute a trip down to, you know, to a meeting feels like an eternity for me because I'm so used to just getting up, you know, grabbing a coffee, and I'm at work. So, um, you, know, you know, working from home is actually really good, Yahoo. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, so automatic all the way. Uh, T1TO will uh, Mir be open to all Linux communities? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone and anyone is welcome to use Mir. Um, flavor, how does one get a wicked sweet beard since it's yours? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is related to uh, the Engadget thing. I was a little surprised to see my face on Engadget today. Um, Mike Hall, when he posted the, the thing about uh, the core apps that have been going on, um, uh, the core apps uh, work that's been going on. Someone created a core app with my face on it, so you press my face and it says community or something else. Um, and uh, uh, that got picked up by Engadget, and one of the screenshots was a picture of my face, and they made some snarky comment about my beard. This beard, just so everybody knows, I shaved it off once, and my head looks stupid without this beard. Like this beard, it's 
there's like a feng shui of my face, and this beard needs to be there, otherwise it looks absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's not a wicked sweet beard by any stretch. I used to have this like crazy beard that kind of came down like this. Um, there's some pictures on the internet, and um, my wife made it very clear. I shaved it off a while back, then I met my now wife, and she made it very clear. Hey, yeah, that beard's not happening. It's me or the beard. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, enough about my beard. Uh, Flying Pig, in an interview, the team leader of Kubuntu said, I only had contact with the Linux Mint developer recently. I, I, I only had contact with the Linux Mint developer recently when Canonical claimed that they needed a license to use the compiled packages from Ubuntu. What license do they need? Isn't it all free software? So let me give you a bit of background on this. So we have a trademark license um, in Ubuntu, which also has some uh, copyright um, uh, requirements in there as well. Now, one of the things about trademark law, some people might not know this, is you know, so you, you can register a trademark, and Canonical owns a tra trademark to um, to Ubuntu and to Kubuntu and to Zubuntu, all Ubuntu's basically. If you don't protect your trademark, you can lose it. So if we don't su show sufficiently that we're protecting our trademarks, then um, arguably some random company could take us to court and say that we haven't protected the trademarks and now they own the trademark or something like that. So it's imperative that we, we protect our trademarks. Now what's essential, now we've got a really pretty liberal trademark policy because we want local teams to be able to print out t-shirts and to put logos in their websites and all that kind of stuff. So we've got a, a pretty liberal uh, trademark policy. But the delineation there really is between commercial and non-commercial use. So we basically say we give you a trademark license if you are using the Ubuntu trademark uh, non-commercially. So local teams are a good example of that. If you want to use the Ubuntu trademark commercially, then you need to talk to Canonical about a license. The same applies to uh, to the binaries. So binaries that are built on Launchpad, are, the copyright on those binaries is owned by Canonical. And what we do is we basically say to all uh, free software uh, non-commercial projects, um, then you can use them freely, um, and you know that's how it works. The thing about Linux Mint is that they are technically a commercial. They technically they have commercial use. There's, you know, they they have some affiliate codes and they make some money from some other elements of how they of, of how it works. So um, Canonical has a responsibility to maintain, as I said, in, in terms of trademarks and all the rest of it. We have a responsibility to make sure that we enforce. You know this non-commercial use that someone has has a license, essentially has a trademark license for it. But we're not interested in taking money from it. I mean, you know, so basically, Canonical's got this uh, agreement that basically says everything below this level in terms of revenue, like you don't even need to report it to us. Just you know, whatever. Just you know, you sign the license, you have a trademark license, you carry on as normal. It's just a piece of paperwork. If you then start bringing in millions and millions and millions of dollars, then it gets different because you know Canonical basically pays for all of those binaries to be built. We maintain all the build infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. So we basically say, if you're making a ton of money from those binaries, then it's only fair that we share the cost of building them. Um, so that's basically how it works. So uh, you know, so essentially with both Kubuntu and Linux Mint, uh, you know, Kubuntu. Uh, and then it's been basically we had a, had a conversation with Canonical, and we signed them on. We signed them up on one. Well, I'm not sure if it's actually been signed with Mint, but with Kubuntu, it's basically uh, an agreement on one of those on one of those trademark licenses that basically says you're below the threshold of money that we really care about in terms of revenue share, and that's it. That's all it is. Um, some kit asks, when will we see the next version of Ubuntu Accomplishments? I've been so busy recently that I haven't been driving a lot of it, but we're actually working right now to get it rolled out into the community so you'll be able to go to trophies.ubuntu.com and you'll be, able to see, um, you'll be able to see your trophies there. So we're actually m moving towards a first cut of it in the next month or so. T1TO, do you, as in Canonical, uh, are you going to publish a guide to port apps from other platforms to Ubuntu Touch? We don't have any fixed plans to do that right now, but we're going to need that. So yes, maybe that would be a cool thing for our community to contribute to and work on. So if anyone's interested in that, then let me know. Welsh Ubuntu, will the Ubuntu SDK allow you to use multiple programming languages, such as C, C++, Python, Java, JavaScript, i.e. bindings for multiple programming languages? 
eventually to be put into the uh, SDK and queue, or the best bits to be if, 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 uh, of it to be merged with the SDK IDE. Sorry if this has already been asked. I keep losing the video feed. No worries, close printing. This hasn't been asked. Um, so um, right now you can write software use for for the SDK using um, uh, C plus plus for for the core queue and then QML for uh, for what we mainly use for the SDK. Uh, you, there are Python bindings, for example, for for Qt. Um, but one of the challenges here is that. With a form factor such as the phone, you can't ship a ton of, you can't ship as many libraries and bindings as you'd, li as you'd like to. So we're, we're trying to recommend that people stay with those languages, that people primarily write their apps using QML. Mm -hmm. um, for the desktop, it's a little different because we've got a big archive of software and you can, there's, a, there's a wider form factor that we can rely on. So that, that's basically how it works. Seb, 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 does Mir have copyright assignments as well? That seems to be one of the reasons as to why Unity hasn't been adopted by lots of other distros as well. Um, yes and no. Uh, so first of all, Mir does have copyright assignments, um, as lots of projects do. As to why um, um, other distros aren't picking up Unity, um, I think there's some technical reasons, as in Unity is not for them. It doesn't fit what they want to do. Uh, I think there's also some political reasons. Some people don't like Canonical. I think that's the reason why some distros don't want to take it. Um, we would love Unity to be picked up by other distributions. Um, I know there was some work going on in Fedora to bring Unity there. I think there was some work going on in OpenSUSE. So we would love Unity to be to be in other in other distros as well. But you know, uh, not everything in the in the open source world just comes down to technical decision making. There's a lot of there's there's some bias and some politics with everybody involved. I'm not saying Canonical and me are not ex ex excluded from that. Um, uh, Tux Kale, what do you think about MariaDB? Um, so I don't really know a lot about it outside of the fact that I'm friends with Monty and friends with some of the people who work for him. Um, and I think Oracle have made some bad decisions in their stewardship of the MySQL project. Um, so I think MariaDB is a good thing. I'm not. I don't. Outside of that, I don't really have a lot of information about it, to be honest with you. So that's pretty much it. Ecto, will apps written with the Ubuntu Touch SDK really work on the desktop, tablet, and phone without having to port them? Yeah, absolutely. Steam for Linux. I have an AT&T Galaxy S3. Will I be able to run Ubuntu Touch when it's stable and connect to the towers? Yes, you should be able to. You know, I wouldn't recommend putting it on there right now. It's still unfinished, but you will be able to do that. One of the things that's cool, um, I mentioned, I forgot to mention earlier on, when people were asking about, um, we had a question earlier on about some, you know, some cool nuggets about what's going on with the with the SDK um, and Ubuntu Touch. There's been some absolutely awesome work going on importing Ubuntu to um, multiple phones. I mean, people have got Ubuntu Touch running on like 30 different handsets, uh, you know, to varying degrees of quality. Some bits aren't, aren't working, some bits are. Uh, I've asked Daniel Holbach, who I asked to, to lead this portathon effort, who's working with the XDA community and other communities to, to do this. I've asked him to liaise with our uh, engineering manager for Ubuntu Touch to see how much of this we can bring in and redistribute. Because there's some redistribution difficulties around some of this, some of the code here from some of the Android bits, as an example. Um, but I, you know, we want to we want to bring that 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 great work into the fold. So we're seeing we're seeing a lot of that a lot of that uh, a lot of that. Great work happening right now uh, in in Ubuntu Touch running on multiple devices. Uh, Abu name. I think the Ubuntu on Air.com page should be redesigned. The chat widget is in the wrong place. Um, very possibly. I I don't really work in Ubuntu on Air. That's something that Jose in the community and some other people work on. So we'll we'll have a look and see if we can fix that up. Frist. I'm currently on Fedora and last uh, the last distro upgrade was 700 megabytes. On mobile updates and distro updates, uh, on mobile updates and distro updates tend to be a lot smaller. Any clues on how the updates to system is going to work with Ubuntu Touch? Will it be the same as we have on the desktop? That's a really good question for us. We've had that a few times before. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to work, and I think it's going to be down to the policy of the carrier. So, obviously, one of the challenges with phones is that you are going to take those questions, you get those questions, those updates over the wire. You can't just send out a 700 megabyte update, and if you do, you might want to send out an update that is happens once every so often, almost like a service pack. 
So the good news is that we really have the technology to do it either way, to send out a chunked update or to send out um, essentially package updates. And I think it'll be up to the discretion of the carrier as to how they want to do that based upon the plans and how their customers are using their service. Uh, Flavor, do you prefer Wine, Play on Linux, or Crossover? Or have you been able to move completely away from Windows programs? I don't use any Windows programs on my laptop. The only Windows program that I use uh, is I use Cubase. Um, Cubase for audio recording, and that's more about because of my hardware requirements that aren't supported in Linux. I have some uh, I have like a touch service for doing my sound recording. Um, but in terms of my day-to-day -day use of, of computing use, I don't use any Windows software or Mac software. Uh, next question. Uh, Flying Pig, will Ubuntu accomplishments be ported to QML? Already answered that. Yep, we're expecting that it will be. Seb, 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 are you going to play guitar or drums today? Uh, I'm going to see if there's a sleeping baby in the room next door, and then I can always throw on some guitar. But as ever, I don't want to just play guitar and assume that you folks want to see it. So if any, if you're interested in hearing guitar, then please say yes. Uh, if you're not interested in hearing it and would prefer to focus on questions, then please say no. And if there is a baby, if people want it and there's a baby uh, awake, then I'll do it. Mike Dev, can the Ubuntu Touch Core apps and the uh, cute QML version of Gwibber be included on the desktop notification area? Uh, yes, they should be. Um, they should hook in with the uh, with the all the indicators. Um, uh, number twenty two, the avenue. It's the place where we all go. I made reference. Um, where is Jose Antonio? Are uh, Jose is not here. He's at school right now. So, um, uh, okay. So a bunch of people saying yes, yes, yes to guitar. Okay, fair enough. I'll bring some guitar. Uh, CLAP, good to see you. Hey, Jono, who should I contact? What action should I take if local Ubuntu communities bring a very bad name to Ubuntu? I have no influence in this community. How can I find aid? Uh, the best thing you can do, CLAC, is to uh, email the local council, local-council at lists.ubuntu.com, and they can help you. Number two is 22 asks, can I play 22 Acacia Avenue? I used to be able to play it. I haven't played it for a while. Um, so, yes. Uh, all right, we're out of questions. Any final questions? Any final questions? Get your questions in, my friends. Roll up, roll up. Uh, Jala, part of the bad feeling towards Android came from people who have had bad implementations with respect to hardware and UI changes, update handling, etc. Are you aware of giving too much flexibility to carriers might be bad for Ubuntu? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that one of the things that we're very, very conscious of in the Ubuntu world is when you see something, when, when you go and um, if you get Ubuntu on a device or on a desktop or a laptop, or whatever it might be, and it says Ubuntu, it says that it's Ubuntu, we want it to be Ubuntu. We want it to look and, and embody the values of Ubuntu. So we don't want that fragmentation. And a lot of that is going to be a negotiation between the carrier and Canonical. Like I said earlier on, Canonical owns a trademark for Ubuntu. And we're not going to allow Ubuntu to be stamped onto a product that doesn't maintain the design ethos that we have. And it's, you know, it's, 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 uh, I think it's going to be a, a negotiation about how that works. Um, uh, Steam for Linux, what version of Linux is, uh, is Ubuntu Touch running? That's a good question. I assume it's running the latest kernel. I don't know specifically. George Stephen, will Ubuntu Canonical advise developers to use QML for desktop apps? Yes, we will do. Uh, Steam for Linux. What version of Ubuntu? What ver version of Ubuntu is Touch? Uh, I, good question. I think it's been running on twelve ten, but I think it's been upgraded to thirteen or four. Flavor. If you were, were the new pope, what would you do first? <laughs> what would I do first? Um, the first thing I'd do is bring quality to. Um, uh, I bring equality to gay people and to women. Um, um, Welsh Ubuntu, will it be possible at some point to run Android apps on the Ubuntu phone? This was demoed with Ubuntu for Android, I believe. Also, there's a bit of confusion between Ubuntu for Android and Ubuntu phone. What do you think? Uh, there is some confusion. We're trying to clarify that more and more. Um, whether Android apps are going to run on Ubuntu phone in the future is kind of like an open book. Right now, the focus is on making Ubuntu, the Ubuntu SDK like the right choice um, for people. But uh, who knows in the future? Uh, RRN uh, Randall, 
Uh, what's the most exciting thing you've seen or heard in the Ubuntu world this week? Bonus points for a non-software answer. Um, one of the coolest, one one thing that really uh, made me happy this week. It's kind of not really Ubuntu related, but about eight years ago, I set up this project in England called. Um, mm. Uh, well, it is Ubuntu, really. Uh, so this project called the Inf Info Point Project. And basically what it was, was uh, in England you have these computer fairs every weekend. And it's basically where people go and buy and sell motherboards and hard disks and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if they happen as much these days as they did back then with so many people buying laptops now. But uh, my idea was, uh, why don't I reach out to the computer fair organizers across the UK and basically get them to give free stands to uh, local Linux user groups to go and talk about Linux. So and so I set up the project and then I coordinated with some of the lugs and encouraged people to um, to do this. And we had a website and all the rest of it, did some community building. And it was really cool. You know, people would go out there and, and do that, and I go out there and exhibit Linux. You know, my local uh, computer fair as well. And then you know I moved on to other projects. I joined Canonical and got busy with other stuff. A guy called Alan Cox, not the Alan Cox, the Colonel guy, the uh, the other Alan Cox, uh, sent me an email uh, this week, basically talking about just some Ubuntu-related stuff. And then he told me that he's been running an uh, an info point at a computer fair pretty much every uh, like once a month for the last eight years. And I just thought that is one of the coolest things I've ever heard. So I was really stoked about that. Um, Okay, I'm going to blast through a couple of questions, then I might see if we can do some guitar. Um, uh, Ubuntu is there any reasons why Software Center isn't listed on the Launchpad core apps for the phone? In, in the Launchpad core apps for the phone, would it be a member of the community to come up with a solution? It would be awesome if the community could work on that. Right now, Software Center has not really been a primary focus; just been we've been focused on getting uh, we've been focused on getting so the actual applica the, the applications written themselves, largely because you can actually do a search on the lenses on the phone and then find an application and install it from the phone without going to a software center. Uh, Flying Pig, is there an Ubuntu loco in Vatican City? <laughs> no idea. I hope so. Uh, Flavor, what kind of computer do you use? I use a ThinkPad T520. Um, OK. Let me go and see if there's a baby. And if there isn't a baby, I'll play some guitar. Hang on. All right. There is not a crying baby. Let me grab the guitar. Hang on. Hang on a second. What? I'm on the video. I'm doing my video cast. I'll be five minutes. No, I'm just. Hang on. All right, tell me, if, can you hear that?
There you go. Guitar. <laughs> All right, we have one minute left. Any final questions, my friends? Any final questions? Any final questions? No questions. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining me for my weekly Q&A. Uh, I'll be here again next week, regular time, instead of uh, the hour later. So thank you, everyone, for... Uh, Thank you for everyone for uh, for joining for joining me. As ever, questions are always welcome on anything on any topic. Uh, whatever you want to ask next week, you can come and ask any question you want. Um, and uh, you know, thank you to everyone for your contributions to Ubuntu and for uh, for bringing free software to the masses. And uh, I'll see you all in a week. All right, thank you.